Stop right there. Yeah, you. If you like all things entertainment, current events, or Hollywood, then look no further. Creator to Creators, hosted by director Mio Shabin of Horror Noir, interviews filmmakers and creatives from around the world. Join in on the fun, guest celebrities, and informative information to have as a creator. Hit subscribe and stay connected to Creator to Creators. Hey guys, welcome to Creator to Creators today. Today we have a special guest in the building, director, writer, um, actor extraordinaire. Hey, what's happening? Lawrence Adisa. How you doing, my friend? Good. Ready to rock and roll. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I, I'm so happy I could have you on the show. And I, you know, the show is about talking to creatives that, like yourself, people that, you know, doing what they love to do and, and, ma- and making a living out of doing it. Um, can you tell me from the beginning how a little bit about your childhood, where you grew up and how you got inspired to get into the industry and like what led you into it? Oh, absolutely. Um, I grew up in New York, uh, money earning Mount Vernon, New York, <laughs> home of Denzel and Heavy D and everybody else. And um, just growing up in that city, because a lot of people were already doing their thing in the entertainment industry, it was easy to uh, get motivated, you know, um, to try that path, you know, take that journey to the uh, entertainment arena, as we like to call it. So, uh, (laughs) yeah, I gave it a shot early, early on in my early 20s, did a lot of plays, um, off Broadway, took a lot of classes in Manhattan, just paid a lot of dues, extra work, you know, just learning my craft and was a hundred percent committed, you know, so it didn't matter if it took a year or five years, I was in it to win it. And that was a long time ago, long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I couldn't tell you. You look, you look great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what, what would you like? What was it? Was like, was it a movie that you watched or was it just, mm. you know, um, something you were like, you know what? I want to, I want to try this. I want to get into it. You know, honestly, what? I was, um, and a lot of my friends back home know the story. I was working at a bank um, called Marine Midland Bank in New York. And I was basically, basically like um, the mailman, you know, delivering mail all around the branches. And I honestly hated the job. <laughs> I just hated delivering people's mail. I just felt like <laughs> God put me on this earth to do more than deliver people's mail. Uh, <laughs> but I had to do what I had to do. And one day I literally, um, we were in the lunchroom, I, I believe, taking a lunch break, should I say. And I saw a commercial, like a lot of people see Hey, you want to be an actor? Come down to so-and-so studios and blah, blah, blah. So I did it. I went down to Manhattan. It was called uh, Faces International. Nice. And unfortunately, it was a ripoff company. Oh, no. One of those companies that they tell you, you know, it costs $1,000, $1,500 for your photos. Oh my God. To go into their catalog and the catalog gets shipped out to agents and producers globally. They put, it's very, it was a very, um, it was a very, um, what's the word I want to use? It was very well run. I mean, they had mm-hmm. people like Bill Cosby on the cover. Oh, of their <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> to give it the impression that they were interviewing Bill Cosby, Michael Caine. I mean, I remember this stuff like it was yesterday because that's how they, wow. they sucker you in. You know, if you see Bill Cosby on the cover. Oh, yeah. You're like. <laughs> it must be legit, right? And <laughs> right. When you open the cover, there's like hundreds of photos of aspiring actors and models, etc. Hundreds. It's a very thick book that they say they mail out. And I was one of the hundreds. I was one of the hundreds. Uh, but, you know, I, I knew something was wrong. After I started after, you know, I, I paid for it. I knew something was wrong a few months later. Yeah. So I had a... Uh, I don't know. It's just, you know, my instincts. I don't, I don't you know, I'm not what they call uh, someone who you're going to get away with, you know, punking me. <laughs> <laughs> so I had some lawyer friends. <laughs> 
Okay. And I contacted my uh, some lawyer friends of mine and told them what happened. And they sent some threatening letters to Faces International. Oh, wow. And yeah, one of the like managers there contacted me. <laughs> and she was like, Lawrence, look, um, <laughs> your attorney contacted us. And <laughs> believe it or not, it's a true story. That lady, wow. her and I became friends. Uh, she literally started to submit me for legitimate auditions that she knew on her own. Wow. On her own. Wow. Legitimate. There's a casting director named Twinkie Bird, very well known African American casting director, one of the biggest in, in Hollywood. Wow. She casted me in a, a music video that Latifah, Queen Latifah, um, it was one of her groups. And I got paid like four or $500 for that. Nice. I booked a commercial that paid like, a, I think, $800 or whatever. At the end of the day, I made back. The fifteen hundred dollars that I paid <laughs> right. from acting, right. from acting, yeah. wow! And that was it. Once I got in, once I got ripped off, I was in. I was in. Yeah. <laughs> you like, you know, I know what I, I know what to like. Yeah, I'm glad it didn't like discourage you at all or like take you away from the path. Nah, nah, it it it, it, uh, it motivated me. It motivated right. Me. I got my money back, and once I got my money back, I got a real agent, and then. I got a uh, guest star role with New York on New York and the cover. Awesome. Gina King was my co-lead. Love her. And I, yeah, <laughs> she's awesome. We've been friends ever since. And then I did Spike Lee, joined Clockers after that. So the wheel, it just started yeah. rolling after that. Once I got ripped off, <laughs> it started rolling. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, I love that. I love that it just, so, it, you know, steady, progressively going. Were there times where you like, were um in in your in your work like in your artist craft artistry craft do you feel like you're kind of stuck and like not motivated and how do you stay motivated and like kind of get out of that rut as an artist that's that's, that's a good question because um unfortunately a lot of artists that i've experienced it's like zero to 100 and they are like on a hundred, okay. right pedal to the metal i'm going to make it i want to be on tv and blah 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 which is you know, it's, it's, it's what you would think would be natural, mm -hmm. but you're so focused and committed that you don't take a breather. Right. You know, right. you're waiting for that phone to ring and the agent doesn't call you back. You know, the callback mm -hmm. doesn't work out and you, you can be like your head will explode because you're not stepping away. What I did early on, my friends that I, became like brothers with, we all like to party. Mm -hmm. Our escape was going out. Mm -hmm. Just because you, you go hang out and get some fresh air, doesn't mean you're not focused. If you have an audition the next right. day, of course, you, you handle your business. If you don't have any auditions and your phone's not ringing, <laughs> don't sit there. It's tough. Get out. Yeah. Get out. Yeah, get some fresh air. Yeah. 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 And that's true. When you having, like when you're getting, like I said, you have auditions and sometimes like, like I remember getting an agent and I was, I was getting some stuff, but I wasn't, I, I was booking on my own more than they're working for me. So I felt like, like you're saying you should get out of that situation and find something, someone that's constantly, you know, getting you work. Um, yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, even finding agents are kind of tough. How did, like, what did you do? Like, did you just go online, referrals through just friends telling you, like, who to go to? Yeah, you know, once yeah. once I got ripped off from that company um, and I started taking, like, legitimate acting classes, mm. um, Black Filmmaker Foundation, they might still be okay. in Harlem, um, but I went there and I got a lot of knowledge from there. Um, they had these books and now everything's online, of course, but they had like agents, agent books or directories, mm, okay. agent manager directories. And I did the old school way. I mailed out like a hundred headshots wow. to agents in Manhattan, I mean, New York, and a couple called back. And one of them 
Carson organization, uh, Steve Carson, legitimate agent. <laughs> they liked me, called me in. Mm -hmm. I had wow. no contacts, no connections. I just did it the old way. I just mailed out my headshots. And I tell people that. So <laughs> mail out your headshot. <laughs> just don't mail it to Faces International. Yeah. <laughs> 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 For those that are listening, do not mail right. to Faces International. <laughs> um, no, that is why. Like that's wild because um, I bet I bet to you. Do you feel like now the 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 newer generation things are like more like they, they want it easier? Like I don't want to mail it out, you know. Think, and you're like, in my day, we really worked it. I so I'm sure that's there's that difference. Everything is faster. It's, it's, Every, information is easily accessible, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they wanted the fast way. Hey, can you connect me? And and that can work, you know, like, mm -hmm. but if you don't have, like, people want agents or managers, or should I say aspiring actors want agents and managers mm -hmm. like that. They want you to hook them mm -hmm. up. Right. But it doesn't work that way. Like, agents and managers, they want to see what you have to offer. So you have to have a real right. How do you get a reel? You got to do, you know, student films, whatever it is, you have to get, you have to acquire content. Right. You can't just walk in there, you know, and that's what they think. So I always tell them, you don't need an agent to book student films or right. indie, indie films, non-union. You don't need that. Uh, book some roles, get the footage, get yourself a reel. Once you get a reel, mm -hmm. you're performances then you can mm -hmm. send me your reel the reel still might not be enough because it's it's not like you know sag type work right they just mm -hmm. only want sag work but some other agents love to get like the, the fresh face mm -hmm. that has some really awesome material footage right but a lot of these a lot of these aspiring actors they haven't acquired any footage okay so yeah if you have any footage you gotta snout headshots period. right mm -hmm. i've seen that i've seen that a lot uh a film a year ago and then you know we were like looking for people to send submit their audi like audition like not just audition, audition tape but their reels a lot of the actors surprisingly were like i don't have any reel i'm like you don't have a reel <laughs> and it just blew my mind i'm thinking like that is uh that's really nuts um so yeah definitely get the, those yeah. reels for sure definitely yeah. um i have a question um you know moving into like i mean obviously you create so much i've seen a lot of your work and i got to work with you which is so awesome i'm very very Absolutely. privileged to work with you you're awesome <laughs> and um what like so with i don't know if you can talk about the new project but um what inspired that night night games oh wow night games I, i'm a horror buff so okay. <laughs> yeah even though i've made comedies etc but i I'm, i love hardcore horror um i shot a horror a couple of years ago called bnb hell mm -hmm. um, it wasn't as hardcore it, it was more suspense thriller type of horror uh this one i wanted it to be really where i was where i like to go i like the gore and all that stuff um so i knew my next film it was going to be more of my flavor, right? Yeah. Not, not vanilla. It was, going, it was going to have a lot of, a lot of flavor to it, you know, with yeah. the killings, with the killings. Mm -hmm. So I just, um, I during the um, COVID thing, mm -hmm. I really didn't have the creative juices flowing, even though it was COVID. Yeah. So I optioned uh, the original Night Games. Okay. Right. I, um, I optioned it from a writer, Sean. Knox and his his version of it you know me and my wife we were looking for just a skeleton okay you know basically a big house with a small cast was what I was looking for in a script mm -hmm. and then from there I was going to add everything the meat the bones the veins the arteries the jacket the pants everything yeah and that's what we did all we did was really keep the title in like three there's only three actors in the original night game oh Okay. And the final night games is like 12, 11 actors, I believe. Um, it's a completely different storyline. I just completely put it in my, created it or re, rewrote it into my vision. Right. But it started with um, just going through a whole bunch of submissions. I went through Ink Tip, I believe it's called, and um, a bunch of writers submitted their scripts and we read, we read all of them. Um, like the synopsis of all the like over a hundred scripts. Wow. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. So we picked night games and 
and I just got busy. I started rewriting it. Yeah. And my team gave me some good ideas as well. Um, you know, my guy Solomon, Ronnie came on later in the, in the um, uh, early stages.